Before we start looking at waveforms on the balance modulator section of the board, let's go over a little theory so we can understand how a balance modulator should work. That way we can know what kind of waveforms we should expect to see. I'm using a little balance modulator board. This isn't the Bidex board. And I'm feeding in a 2.5 MHz carrier signal. You can see the 2.5 MHz on the scope screen. We have about 400 millivolts of carrier there. This is the same carrier displayed on a spectrum analyzer. It's tuned to 2.5 MHz, so the center frequency where the spike is is 2.5 MHz. What we see on the screen is going from left to right. Each division on the screen is equal to 5 kHz. So if we come over here, that would be 25 kilohertz away from the 2.5 megahertz in the negative direction. This would be plus 25 kilohertz. It would be 5 kilohertz for each division, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this would be 2.5 megahertz plus 25 kilohertz. Any other frequencies that would be there would show up as vertical deflection on the spectrum analyzer. What I'm going to do now is adjust some modulation voltage in and I'm going to modulate this with 10 kilohertz signal. So I should start generating sidebands above and below the carrier two divisions above and two divisions below as I increase the modulation voltage. So I'm going to increase it a little bit at a time And now we're starting to see some, some side bands. This is the upper side band, this is the lower side band. I'm going to continue to increase it to that point right there. At that point right there when the side bands are equal to 50% of the amplitude of the carrier, I'm at 100% modulation. If we carry through a little bit, what we would find in theory is at this point, currently two-thirds of the power is in the carrier and one-sixth of the power is contained in each of the side bands. When the modulation is 100%, the amplitude of both side bands, when you total the two together, is equal to the amplitude of the carrier. There's one way to look at that that makes a little sense and that's probably better on the scope which you're used to seeing. So right now you see the carrier at two and a half megahertz here. This is the upper side band at two and a half megahertz plus ten kilohertz. This is the lower side band at two and a half megahertz minus ten kilohertz. We're going to do the same thing right now while watching the oscilloscope. I'm going to adjust the vertical just a little bit, get it centered, and then I'm going to increase the modulation voltage. And we're starting to see a little change in amplitude of the carrier. We have a little more, and there we have doubled the amplitude of the carrier and we also go down to almost zero at the minimum. This is 100% modulation. If you remember when we started out the carrier was four divisions in amplitude and as we added modulation it went up to eight so it doubled in amplitude. Why did it double in amplitude? Well let's just stop and think and look at the spectrum analyzer again for a second. There's our 100% modulation on the spectrum analyzer. Remember what I said, at 100% modulation the amplitude of these sidebands, or each sideband had one half the amplitude of the carrier. In total they had the same amplitude as the carrier. So, if we stop and think about what's actually happening here. This is a slower frequency than 2.5 MHz. This is 2.5 MHz. This is a faster frequency than 2.5 MHz. We could generate this exact same display if we simply took three generators and set them 
one to two and a half megahertz, one to two and a half minus ten kilohertz, and one to two and a half plus ten kilohertz, and and hooked them to the spectrum analyzer, and we'd get the exact same display if we had the amplitude set similar. So those are three separate frequencies. Three separate frequencies, one low, one middle, and one high. What happens is the phase relationship between the three signals are changing continually. This one is moving faster because it's a higher frequency. This is moving to middle speed because it's a slower frequency. And this is the lowest frequency, so it's moving the slowest. What happens is the there will be a time when the phasing of this lower side band and the phasing of the upper side band are in phase with one another. At the time when they're in phase with one another and in phase with the carrier, that doubles the amplitude of the display on the scope and you get the eight division representation. When these two are in phase with each other, the upper and lower side band are in phase with each other, but out of phase with the carrier you then get the minimum. So let's go back and do that same explanation while looking at the scope. Remember the maximums were when the upper side band and the lower side band were in phase with each other and in phase with the carrier and it generated the maximums. The minimums were when the upper and lower side band were in phase with each other but were out of phase with the carrier so they made it go to zero. Okay, so that's amplitude modulation. What's that got to do with us? Well, we, we're going to have a double sideband modulator in the bit-x transmitter, and we're going to generate a double sideband signal. How do we generate a double sideband signal? Well, that's relatively easy. I'll show you in just a second. Remember, a double sideband signal is simply an AM signal with no carrier. What it's going to look like is pretty much like this. What I've done is I've simply removed the carrier by adjusting the balance on a balanced modulator. This is the signal we should expect to see using a spectrum analyzer coming out of our balanced modulator on our bit-x board. So the carrier's suppressed way down in the mud there, and you can see I can tweak a little bit and bring it back up, but it's gone, and with it went two-thirds of the power. We now have just one-third of the power we started out with because two-thirds of the power originally was in the carrier. So let's take and do the same thing again while watching the oscilloscope. Just remember at this display the carrier is 50 percent of the display we're seeing now. The other 50 percent is the sideband amplitudes added together. So we're going to balance that out again And when the, that's not balanced there, or that's not balanced there, when the peaks on both, all the sets of waveforms are equal, we're balanced. So what happened? Well, we lost 50% of the amplitude because the carrier's gone, and now all we have left is the sideband frequencies. The sideband frequencies beating against each other is what gives us this envelope display. Just in case you think I'm doing some kind of fancy computer generated graphics or doing a bait and switch or some other kind of magic, we're going to do it both at the same time. On the right you see the spectrum analyzer display, on the left the oscilloscope, and we have a 100% modulation display. I'm going to adjust the balance modulator now. You can see the carrier is about the same amplitude as the sidebands now on the spectrum analyzer and if we keep decreasing it we'll find right there the carrier is pretty much gone. I continue to adjust I get see you can see I change the on the oscilloscope I change the size of the the lobes on it so what we want to have is something similar to this that's what we want to get to see coming out of our balance modulator on the bit X. One other term you'll hear 
use is carrier suppression in dB or decibels. I've changed the display on the spectrum analyzer from a voltage or linear display to a decibel display and we can see that it looks quite a bit different. Here's the carrier and the sidebands now are just down a little ways. Well each division on this spectrum analyzer now in the dB display is 10 decibels. So for the sidebands to be down half voltage, half voltage is 6 dB, so before on the amplitude display they were one half the amplitude of the carrier. So if we look here, we can move that over and we can see that this is six tenths of a division now, so we're, sidebands are now attenuated 6 dB are now below the carrier by 6 dB. Now let's go ahead and balance the carrier out while watching the decibel display. See we can get down, it's pretty touchy down towards the bottom. But if you look we were here, so we're now down 10, 20, 30, 40, almost 50 dB down of carrier suppression at that particular setting. So that's the type of suppression we'd like to see on our transceiver also. And we'll be able to adjust the balance on it using the carrier balance pot and the carrier capacitor. This is the little balance modulator board we were using. It's just a simple little circuit using an LM1496. And you can see the balance pot up there, the white square up to the left by the negative 8 volt DC input.